Give me a nod if at some time in grade school, you took a class dedicated to the history of your state. I did. You probably covered the top level information, state flag, state motto, state bird, probably some other things that make your state unique. I took Tennessee history in sixth grade. I don't really recall much about taking Tennessee history, maybe because I wasn't that interested in it at the time, or maybe because my sixth grade teacher wasn't that interested in it and he canceled class and we all played kickball. So I, I took this opportunity, the purpose of this speech was to research an unknown topic and report on it. I thought this is a great time for me to revisit my Tennessee history class and learn a thing or two. Maybe I can answer a few burning questions I've had, like why is Tennessee the volunteer state? Why are there three stars on the flag? And most importantly, do we wear shoes? Which is not a historical question so much as one I got asked a lot in college. Hold on. Whether it was the War of 1812, the Battle of the Alamo in 1836, or the American Mexican-American War in 1846, Tennessee supplied a large number of volunteers during times of need, many with familiar names, such as Davy Crockett and Sam Houston. Volunteering is a way of life in the volunteer state. And as much as volunteering for a cause can bring people together, Tennessee has had its fair share of divisions. And that brings us to the three stars on the state flag. The Tennessee River forms in the northeastern corner of the state at the confluence of the French Broad and Holston Rivers. It cuts through the state once, makes a giant U-turn in northern Alabama, then cuts through the state a second time before it ends at the Ohio River in western Kentucky. This riverine pair of scissors trisects the state into western, middle, and eastern portions which are depicted as the three stars on the flag. Western Tennessee's economy, history, and geology are dominated by its proximity to the Mississippi River. It's blessed with low rolling hills that give way to a low coastal plain suitable for farming, but occasionally pockmarked by swamps. Memphis is its largest city. Memphis is fueled by blues music and barbecue. Although the birthplace of the blues is in the Mississippi Delta, Memphis commercialized it and in the process gave birth to soul and rock and roll. W.C. Handy, the self-proclaimed father of the blues, was based in Memphis for many years. Stax Records and Sun Studios brought a long list of now familiar names to our ears, including Booker T and the MGs, Otis Redding, Isaac Hayes, Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, B.B. King, Carl Perkins, and Jerry Lee Lewis. The reincarnations of these legendary studios are still bringing music to our ears in the form of Justin Timberlake, Ben Harper, and Nathaniel Rateliff and the Night Sweats. One can easily be upstaged in Memphis though by the profusion of delicious barbecue that creates an ever present haze of smoking meats. And if barbecue doesn't upstage you, the Peabody Ducks will. Making their daily march, to and from the fountain in the lobby of the Peabody Hotel. Yes, they take the elevator and they live on the top floor with the best view in town. Middle Tennessee's economy, history, and geology are dominated by its position between the two cuts of the Tennessee River. It features limestone hills that sprout cedars and hide caves. Nashville is its largest city. While blues, barbecue, and the king rule Memphis, Nashville is the queen of country music and a local favorite called hot chicken. Nashville did not give birth to its signature sound of country music. Bristol, Tennessee did in the northeastern corner of the state, but Nashville has popularized it. I won't try to name the thousands of country musicians that have called Nashville home, but I will give Loretta Lynn and the Ryman Auditorium recognition here. Invented and popularized in Middle Tennessee are a few probably familiar establishments. Cracker Barrel Restaurants, Cracker Barrel Restaurants, started in 1969 in Lebanon, Tennessee, and now has locations in 48 states. 
George Dickel and Jack Daniels distilleries both capitalize on the limestone filtered waters of Middle Tennessee to produce their signature beverages. If you're a follower of country music, then you've probably heard of Puckett's Grocery in Leapers Fork, Tennessee. And maybe you've had a spicy chicken sandwich with pickles at a place called Wendy's or Chick-fil-A, not started in Tennessee, but Nashville's Prince's Hot Chicken has been producing this delicious creation for over a hundred years. Eastern Tennessee's economy, history, and geology are dominated by its position between the Appalachian Mountains and the many tributaries of the Tennessee River. Mountains in this part of the state reach as high as 6,643 feet, while the river basins are typically around 800 feet above sea level. This topography provides challenging hiking and mountain biking terrain, and the area thrives on tourism and shipping rather than agriculture. Knoxville is its largest city, followed closely by Chattanooga. Eastern Tennessee has had its fair share of disagreements with establishment, starting with the northeastern corner of the state trying unsuccessfully to become the 14th state of the Union, later voting strongly against having the state of Tennessee join the Confederacy at the onset, at the onset of the Civil War, and continuing today with squabbles over massive highway projects. Eastern Tennesseans pride themselves on their dedication to the communities in which they live while doing their best to get along with others. There's a peculiar twang to the East Tennessee accent that it shares with bluegrass music and Dolly Parton has popularized her own blend of bluegrass and country with great success. Eastern Tennessee has also popularized snack cakes, Little Debbie's and moon pies, bacon from Pig Whisperer, Alan Benton and Coca-Cola in a bottle. Invented in Atlanta, Coca-Cola transitioned from a fountain drink to the bottle at its first bottling plant located in Chattanooga. Thank you for joining me on a whirlwind tour of the state of Tennessee. And yes, Tennesseans do wear shoes for school and church. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster.